All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about a, not necessarily a controversial topic, but something that crosses my mind every once in a while because I have such a wide um, array of survival knives and bushcrafting knives and just outdoor field knives as a whole. And sometimes I just scratch my head because there are some times where I sit there and I'm like, there are knives so cheap that you can get for bushcrafting and for survival, but that will be another video, that make me question why we spend so much money on knives. What you're looking at here is a $10 Mora 511 craft line. And this knife, you know, it's not the best, it's not the most perfect, it's not necessarily out of box, the, you know, ultimate bushcrafting knife. But for what it is, functionally speaking, this thing is very effective and very usable. And you compare it to knives that are things like this Winkler Blue Ridge Hunter. And, you know, it's around the same size as a Blue Ridge Hunter. Like, um, you know, you guys can see here, hopefully, you know, around the same size as a Blue Ridge Hunter, a slightly bigger, but you look at it and this is $11 and this is $365. And no doubt this um, Blue Ridge Hunter does use better steel. It of course is a full tang. It uses, um, you know, walnut wood, uh, you know, sculpted walnut wood handles. So objectively speaking, it should be more expensive, of course. And I will say to the fairness of the Mora. This is not, I feel like Winkler knives are typically, you know, a little bit overpriced, but either way, even when you look at, you know, other knives, things like the JBK Layman or, you know, my much beloved uh, Bark River Knives Bushcrafter in 3V, you sit there and you're like, well, darn, you know, these are, you know, incredible knives in their own right, but something like this little 511 is just so cheap that it's like, why do we spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a singular bushcrafting knife when you can get a 511. And that got me thinking too, what are some other knives that are just incredible deals? And so stuff like the Mora Khan's Bull is another one that's a really solid deal. And I will say to the kind of credit of something like a Khan's Bull or a Clipper or Companion, one thing that I dislike about the 511 is that it is a fully plastic handle. So this guy does not have a lot of um, grip when you know the handle is wet or if it's bloody and you're trying to process game animals. There are some downsides to something like the 511 or really the Craftline series as a whole with uh, Mora's Craftline series. And I will say where, you know, the Mora Companion, the Mora um, Kunzbul and things like, um, the clipper kind of beat the Craftline series is in having that rubberized handle that gives you really a lot of tactile grip, including when it's cold and including when it is um, wet or you know, just inclement weather in general. So something like this is a really, really compelling argument as well. And once again, something like the cons bull is coming in, you know, in the mid $30 range. So still, you know, a 10th of the price of a Winkler, you know, Blue Ridge Hunter or, you know, a 10th of the price of something like a JBK layman um, and you know certainly a little bit you know the uh, bushcrafter is a little bit cheaper but definitely not not that cheap at all so other knives that I was reminded of too and once again this is another just fully plasticized handle so it's not you know as grippy as a rubberized handle but something like the Condor Pterosaur is going to be yet again another really solid option that's coming in at about $40 so truly a tenth of a price of the JBK Layman and while the Pterosaur you know, while the JBK is, you know, once again, a custom made knife, it has, you know, a tapered tang. These are both full tang knives. And, you know, honestly, this Pterosaur is really, honestly, a pretty solid blade. In addition to the nice thing about the Pterosaur and the Consbool is that their spines have been sharpened to strike ferro rods, only further increasing the value of these options. In addition, the Pterosaur is in 1095 high carbon. The um, Mora Consbool is in 12C27, so it's a little bit of a more budget oriented, um, you know, blade steel, but still, you know, once again, looking at 1095, looking at C100 of the 511 um, craft line, you know, C100 is essentially a, another form of 1095. So you're looking at, you know, once again, not as good a performance, you know, CPM 3V on the BRK Bushcrafter, 8670 on my JBK Layman and 80 CRV2 on the Winkler, but, I will say like a lot of this is kind of overhyped. I mean, the CPM 3V is about the only true high performance steel. Um, 80 CRV2 and 8670 are um, 
high carbon steel ball bearing steels or high carbon ball bearing steels slash kind of pushing into tool steels. So they are going to offer higher performance than 1095, but once again, it's not going to be leaps and bounds better. The CPM 3V will actually be better, like leaps and bounds better. But um, honestly, like these are really, really compelling choices. And like I said, when you sit there and you feel like, you know, this is a completely comfortable knife, the Condor Terrasaur, it's a completely comfortable knife, feels good in the hand. And I genuinely do enjoy using this knife. And so you sit there and you're like, man, this is only 40 dollars you know there's such good offerings here um, on the budget end of bushcrafting and wilderness um, field knives that it's just so hard sometimes to really sit here and be like why are we paying so much for um, you know more expensive knives and this also kind of harkens back to why when I did my video on why I haven't bought a Winkler before I did and why I honestly said the value equation to the Winkler knives um, like this Blue Ridge Hunter here really isn't there this is why I'm so hard pressed on it and why I'm so critical of companies like Winkler and others, you know, like Half Face Blades, Montana Knife Company. I continue to be very critical of these knife companies and their prices is because like I said, $11, you can go get a Mora craft line or 511 craft line, $40, you can go get a Terrasaur, you know, $30, $35, you can go get a Kunzbull. And these knives really do offer some serious value for what you're paying. And so honestly, like I said, you get there and or you get to the point where you sit there and you're like, man, why are we feeling the need to spend as much money as we do on bushcrafting and field knives when realistically speaking, like these cheaper knives offer so much value in and of themselves. And I'm not necessarily saying that, you know, you should just buy a whole bunch of these knives, a whole bunch of 511s, but honestly, like that's why one of my, um, so when a lot of people new to the field, you know, ask me like, what should the, the you know, gear acquisition priorities be? Honestly, I say, get something like a more 511, get something like a clipper or a companion and just start with those knives. Cause honestly, functionally, these two knives are going to give you a lot of the same task abilities. Like they're going to be able to perform the same tasks and honestly, you really won't notice a huge difference unless you're really pushing it to the extremes. But, you know, take something like a more 511 craft line and then take the rest of your money, your budget, and put it into something like a Grand's First Brooks um, axe or hatchet, you know, put it into silky saws because in those types of areas and categories like a silky saw, unless we're talking about like a Baco Laplander, a silky saw is going to outperform every other competition out there. It's just not even a question. Like silky saws will absolutely dominate cheaper folding saws without a question. And once again, with Gransfors, Brooks, Holtzbrooks, or Holtzbrook, and other, you know, more upper end axe companies, they are going to absolutely outperform cheaper axes as well. So with axes, with saws, with hatchets, um, with a lot of those other tools, the higher end um, performance is going to be a lot more noticeable than the higher end performance in a knife. Now that doesn't mean that you should totally negate and never go over to something like a custom JBK Layman. These are certainly good solid knives and once again when you get to that higher need for performance I do think that these you know higher end knives except for maybe the Winkler <laughs> um, do really hold their own especially with things like high performance uh, steels like CPM 3V you will absolutely notice a difference in performance performance in that regard when you are beating the hell out of the knife. Um, these will not fail, whereas these cheaper knives can potentially fail. But once again, for the most part, so long as you're not trying to baton them through a rock, um, you probably won't notice much of a performance difference either way. So anyways, that is kind of my spiel about why I think it's sometimes crazy to really prioritize these very expensive knives, especially when there are so many other really incredible, truly high performance knives for a tenth, if not less than a tenth of the price of the big boys. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.